Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. Let me tell you a little about my security. There was the Godfather. We always emulate the movies, remember that. We always emulate the movie. The fat man was the Godfather, and I was Michael. Now, as for the Godfather, Black Butch say he ain't have a hit team. No one would name it a hit team. But as for me, my security, let me take you into my security. Wasn't a hit team, no one would call it that. But let me take you into my security. I was out at somewhere like Dave and Buster's, one of them spots like that. I was wearing all my jewelry, chains, two chains, two medallions, bracelets, rings, watches, all of it. I had the whole show on that night. And I'm at Dave and Buster's, and I pay attention to these four niggas watching me, you understand? I can't say I was at Dave and Buster's. I was somewhere on the east side. I think of where I was, but I'm going to tell you the story. I wasn't at David Buster's. I was somewhere, a little spot we ate at and played on the east side. And I was over there. I forget exactly where it was, so I can't tell you it was David Buster's. I'd be wrong. So I'm not going to tell you that because I wasn't at David Buster's. I was somewhere on the east side. I forget where. I had my jewelry and all my shit on. I'm drinking and flossing and shit. Four niggas is paying attention, you understand, and giving me dirty looks. Y'all know what I mean? Like Barney Max said, I know when the motherfuckers looking at me. The Maxter said that, and y'all know the Mac. You understand? I know when the motherfucker want to do something to me. Give me them kind of motherfucking looks that he want to do something to me. I know them kind of goddamn looks. Now, that's the kind of look these four niggas was giving me. Like they wanted to do something to me. So now I go to the bathroom. Here come one of them stinking motherfuckers in the bathroom. Everywhere I go, one of them call himself shadowing me as if the fuck the fat boy don't know about that shit. So let me show you all how I simply handled it. I call Rodney Rice up, went sat down at the table, called the waitress over there and ordered me a drink, told her to get me a motherfucking shrimp cocktail too. You understand? So I had me a shrimp cocktail and ordered me a drink. I was drinking Tangeray Gimlet's now that I think about it. Ordered me a Tangeray Gimlet, you understand, and a shrimp cocktail. And I called Rodney Rice up. I said, Rice, man, these niggas over here, man, give me some real foul motherfucking looks. Like they want to motherfucking do something to me, man. He said, where you at? I said, man, I told him I was such and such. He said, hey, check this out. I ain't there, but you know I'm my crew. I have one of my crew get there immediately. Now, I'm going to give y'all how quick his crew got there and who got there. The motherfucker who got there first was Chris Cole. Got there instantly. By the time I hung that goddamn phone up, y'all got to realize these are police officers. They drive and run through red lights. They are already positioned, and y'all, it's a powerful thing out there called walkie-talkies. When he got on the walkie-talk and told Chris Cole, EJ in trouble, right here, Chris Cole dashed his motherfucking ass over there, got there like Batman, Superman, whipped the fuck up there. Now, they don't know I'm connected like this, that I didn't call the police for my motherfucking security. So these three motherfucking motherfuck clown ass niggas got in their mind, they finna do something to me and take my jury. So okay, Chris Cole come in there. I look around there, see Chris Cole. I get up from the table, drink him a goddamn tang Ray giving them and eating a shrimp cocktail and stepped on over there and Chris Cole. Chris Cole walked towards the bathroom. I said, come on in the bathroom. We and Chris Cole went in the bathroom and I told him exactly what four minutes it was. God damn it. Now, I'm going to show you how much of a goddamn fool these niggas is when they fucking with Eddie Baby. Motherfucking Michael Corleone is who you fucking with when you fucking with me at that time. I said, Chris Cole is these four niggas. Now, what we're going to do is 
You go on outside and you wait outside for me to come out. When I come out, these niggas gonna come out following me. When these niggas come out following me, Chris, you go get them. You go right up to them and stop them and tell them you checking them because you want to see if they drunk driving. That shit worked so beautifully. He found guns on them niggas every day and took them folk punk ass niggas to jail fucking with me when they thought they was finna rob Eddie Baby. I am Eddie Baby. Understand that. When you think you said nothing and you gonna out sneak me and you gonna out plan me, God damn it, I sat down and made one far call and put my mind. Young Michael went to work on your motherfucking ass and all four of them niggas went to jail and I pulled the fuck on out of there smoking a the motherfucking joint after finishing my motherfucking tanger red gimlet and my shrimp cock motherfucking tail. And that's one how I use my security. Since he said he didn't have no goddamn security, I had all them police officers at my detail. When I called them motherfuckers and tell them I was in trouble, after I got shot, I had incredible security that you would not believe. These motherfuckers got walkie-talkies, baby. When I call wherever I am in the city of Detroit, anywhere in the city of Detroit, I am and call them motherfuckers. One of these police officers or one of their boys is going to be Johnny on the spot because they coming, guns blazing, ammo land, sirens on because Eddie, baby, done called. And they know there's some paper in it. After Cole socked it to the motherfuckers, I threw them niggas $10,000. Thank you for socking it to the suck ass motherfuckers thinking they can outthink me, God damn it! I paid them ten thousand for fucking over them niggas, royally. And, and, and make sure you don't lose no Vaseline when you fuck them niggas, man. For thinking they gonna fuck me. Ah, uh, we finna ride when that nigga come out. We gonna come right out, run to the car and get it. No, you ain't. Cause soon as you bring your punk ass out of there, Chris Cole finna slow you up, buddy. And after he slow you up and finna shaking your ass down. You headed down to the 5th Precinct, baby. EJ finna ride out this motherfucker in that brand new Cadillac, smoking one of the motherfucking blunts, talking shit. I got you, motherfuckers. You understand? So I had a crew of motherfuckers I was installated in when I felt like I had any motherfucking trouble, and I picked that goddamn phone up and called Rodney Rice. The sirens is on so I'm just letting you know about me personally. This for me. This my security. This who I had protecting and taking care of me. You understand? And them niggas knew. When I throw a nigga 10000 for that, that's the motherfucker you're going to always run to take care of. City of Detroit ain't paying like that, baby. And don't ever forget that. City of Detroit ain't never paid as good as Eddie Jackson paid. Ask Jamie Harris if the city of Detroit pay as good as Eddie Jackson paid. You understand? That's just the facts of the matter. So when you wanted to beef with me, I had some motherfuckers for you to beef with. And by the time you get through beefing with them motherfuckers, you ain't gonna never want to see me again after you get through running back and forth to court, caught with them goddamn pistols and shit. You gonna wish, but see, to this day, they probably don't even know. You gonna wish, if you knew, you never had motherfucking seeing me because see the real point about it y'all i go at it easy if i really wanted to go at them guys hard i could have went at them hard i went at them in a nice way and taught them a lesson don't be fucking with me thinking you finna outsmart any baby i am any baby and i've been schooled by the motherfucking real eddie jackson senior understand that. So when you think you fucking over me, it's like playing chess, baby. I'm already motherfucking 10 moves ahead of you. Remember that. And this is Eddie Jackson Jr., real true street crime, telling you how my security was when I had to deal with a motherfucker. 
Because anybody getting money going to run into trouble. And I'm going to leave y'all with this one from Suge Knight in Compton. What he told them. Easy, you you need me for security. But when you get trouble, you're going to need. Think about in Compton what Suge Knight said to Easy. When you need trouble, you're going to need a nigga there. You ain't going to be able to. That's how it is. From my point of view, you respect your point of view. That's how I see it and how I saw it and how I handled it. I had some motherfucking police who was bothered by it, but you better have some motherfucking money too after you had them bothered by it and the motherfucking did all that for you. Now, put a smile on their motherfucking face. When I dropped that motherfucking 10 on Chris Cole, that motherfucker was smiling like never before, like me when Bifachi was tailoring me a brand new suit. That's the same smile Chris Cole had on his face when he opened that motherfucker brown paper bag and seen the motherfucker 10 stacks, baby. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime, telling you how it was. Putting one down for you again. Take a look at me on Instagram. I am Eddie Baby at Instagram. I am Eddie Baby. And go over and take a look at Jelani's Catering, Tasting Table, Baker's Finest, straight out of Baker's College. Can cater it for you or can cater something and drop it off to the house. You can order dishes. Say you wanted 12 or 15. Say you wanted a 20 piece platter of them chicken tacos I love with that lime sour cream dressing. He can drop you off a platter of them at your house. Twelve. You understand? He starts at twelve. Platters of twelve. He can make you up twelve of them tacos. Boom. Call him up. Just like DoorDash. He'll drop you off twelve fish tacos. Made by Baker's College Finest. A culinary art student of the art of food. You understand? So call him up and order you 12 of them fish tacos and have them drop them by the house. Easy thing to do. Tell him what time you want him there. You want the tacos there for dinner time? Say you want them there at 6 o'clock. Call Eddie that morning. Call Jelani that morning. Tell him what you want. Jelani, hey, drop X amount of tacos here. Jelani's tasting table. Jelani, drop you the tacos at the time you want, 6 o'clock. Took that order that morning, tell you what the cost. Tacos be delivered to you at 6 o'clock dinner time. You got 12 fish tacos. Jelani's tasting table. Check him out and try his food now. Catered by Baker's College Finest. Don't like to hold you long. So I ain't gonna hold you now. Thank you for having hanging with me, bearing with me. Old school, I am Eddie Baby on on uh, Instagram. At, a, at a Instagram, I am Eddie Baby. And as a go, I got to say, go over and take a listen to the podcast on Spotify. Crime Town Kingpin's Kids is our episode over on Spotify. Good looking Spotify. So. This is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crime, saying thank you to all my like, subscribe, share. Check out Jelani at the tasting, at the table, tasting table. Like, subscribe, share, I'm out, peace and love. And we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Ha, 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 ha.